Let's move in into the last question that we prepared uh, in the course. And that is actually uh, a question that has been asked by a lot of people. So I haven't found one name uh, to add to here, but one of the big questions, you know, who needs to own the customer journey? Who should be responsible and accountable? Oh gosh, where to start with this one, Daniel? There's not one answer to this. There's not the one way to do it in all kinds of organizations. Come on, and, there know, must be one answer. <laughs> it must be simple. No, it's not that simple. Um, I'm making you disappointed, Mark. It's, mm -hmm. Most of those things, it's not that simple to just find. It's very different. And organizations are very different. But uh, there are some good rules to keep to. Who should own the, the, the customer journey? Um, uh, one is that it should be in the in the actual organization in the longer run. Even if it's a kind of a development state when it starts and when it's done, uh, they could be in a, some kind of R&D or development or, or designing responsibility, but the quicker you get the customer journey to be owned by, let's say, product owners, P&L owners, or people in the, in, the, uh, in the business that are connected to the operation of the business, the better, the better it is. Mm. Mm. So customer journey should never end up as a development or designing tool. There has to be an operational uh, model and an mm. operational tool. And I think that's, that's if, if you want one answer to this, push the journey to an operational tool instead of having them as a R&D de development department uh, ownership there. And then it mm. depends on the organization. If, you, if you're a kind of old school organization, you will have P&L. If it's a more a new school, uh, more, a bit more model, you would, modern, you would definitely have like product, product owners. Or business owners or something. And, yeah. And that's what we've been preaching, I think, all along. Like, customer journey maps are a way, are a means to an end. Like, they are a tool to get, to become a more customer-centric organization, right? Yeah. yeah. You have to use them to as to navigate and, uh, yeah, as a compass. And you need to act actively use them. So, I, I really like the... the uh, how you pinpoint that it should be in the operational part yeah. rather yes. than maybe in the innovation or research. Mm. Um, mm. It should be owned by a, by a operation. And I think one interesting uh, thing to note here is that you can also look at how wide your journey is, where it starts and where it ends. You know, if you make it, if you make the journey really small, so small that it just covers your own department, the ownership can probably be stay with you. Mm. But as soon as the journey expands and the, uh, yeah, uh, how do you say that? Goes across multiple departments and you need to find somebody who's responsible actually for delivering that experience across multiple departments. And the challenge is that usually those people aren't readily available in our organization. There aren't a lot of people who are really responsible across multiple departments. Mm, mm. Yeah, which means that you have to go up. Pretty soon you will be on a sea level. Yeah. Uh, and then those sea level people, they are organizing things. Uh, so they have to pinpoint some, who, who's responsible for that. Who will, who will they delegate that to? Um, but the ownership um, for a more uh, broad journey will be on a sea low. And, uh, and, and that brings all other kinds of challenges with it. Yes, of course. And what you then have to do internally is to, to help the sea level to understand that the journey, the customer journey and the customer journey maps and everything that comes from that is an operational issue. It's not a development tool. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's an operational tool. 
that's a really good takeaway. At least I learned something today again. Thank you. <laughs> good. <Thanks. laughs> um, 